Hi, everyone, and welcome to Naked Faith. This is our digital worship service for January 2021. For the uninitiated, Naked Faith is an alternative worship service aimed at youth and young adults, but open to everybody. We have a theme, we play some music, and we have a generally jolly good old time. I'll be your host for this video. My name is Andrew, and this is my co-host, Josh. Say hi, Josh. Hi, Andrew. Before we get started, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, Pekani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We're excited to be gathering virtually with you once again for the very first Naked Faith of 2021. Happy New Year. It's a brand new year. I haven't really made any New Year's resolutions, except to get my hair cut when I'm able to. By the time this video airs, that should be possible, and I'm going to look so fresh. We're excited to share our theme with you. I think we have a really exciting theme for you this month, uh, along with some great music. And so before diving into that theme, I'm going to throw it to the Naked Faith Band, performing the song Sleep on the Floor by the Lumineers. Uh, we chose this first song partly because it's awesome, uh, but also because the lyrics talk a bit about this desire to make a big change in life, this desire to take a leap of faith. And upon reflecting on that, Josh and I talked a bit about how there's fear of mistakes inherent in this, which is relevant to our theme this month. There can be the fear of maybe taking this leap of faith, making an impulsive big life decision is a mistake. But on the other side, there's also the fear of not taking that leap of faith, the fear of remaining in the status quo. And I think a lot of us can relate to this idea of being paralyzed by fear of making the wrong decision. And so we wanted to start off with a song that celebrates this idea of diving into it, taking a leap of faith, regardless of whether it's a mistake or not. And so here's the Naked Faith Band performing Sleep on the Floor by the Lumineers. A toothbrush, dear. Pack yourself your favorite brush. Take a withdrawal slip. Take all of your savings out. Cause if we don't leave this town, might never make it out. I was not born to drown. Baby, come on. Forget all the burning sin. We were not born in sin. Leave a note on your bed. Let your mother know you're safe. And by the time she wakes, we'll have driven through the state. We'll have driven through the night. Baby, come on.
Pack yourself your favorite bows Take a withdrawal slip Take all of your savings out Cause if we don't need this town Might never make it out This month, our theme is Happy Mistakes. We were inspired by the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Bob Ross, a man who preached the idea that mistakes were happy things to make. In comprehending the idea that accidents are happy, we may come to understand that mistakes are not something to be feared or chastised. They're simply examples that we're human. And yet, it would seem that society pushes for perfection, and in doing so, pushes for a certain level of control over those who it asks so much from. Under the pressure of perfection, so many of us feel a dissonance, a disconnect. This pressure tells us to get things right, to not screw up. And these ideals then collide with the reality that none of us are capable of achieving perfection. And this has led us to what we might call an epidemic of self-pressure. And it's a sickness that weighs heavy on our backs, but tells us to stand up straight. The irony here is that we often have so much compassion, kindness, and grace for others. So why is it that we find ourselves so short-changed on compassion for ourselves. And that's what we'd like to discuss this month. Join us as we explore the idea of finding beauty in mistakes and learning what can come from them. Perhaps we can all ease up a little, hit the brakes, go a little easier on ourselves, and recognize that there's a lot of joy that can be found if we just go with the flow, embrace the chaos a little, and see mistakes as something to love. What does it mean to be perfect? By definition, perfection is to be free of flaws or defects. So when we discuss the idea of perfection, we have already set ourselves at a standard that is near impossible to achieve. Whether it be those around us or ourselves, Perfection is something we have all strived for at some point or another. And the reality is that life is imperfect. And there are, there are a million examples of that. But I'm sure that we can all think of an example of a time when things were incredibly imperfect. When you look towards the mountains and see the sun starting to set behind them, I would find it hard to believe that anyone would be able to critique that image. There would be no thought of smoothing the mountains for a more symmetrical look and no talk of changing the hue of the sky to better match the color palette we'd like. In the same way, birds don't change their songs in hopes of perfecting them. They don't change the melody, they just simply sing because there is beauty in imperfection. If all things are designed with purpose, with intent, then that must also mean that things are designed to be imperfect. And I think that there's comfort to be found in knowing that in imperfection, we are perfect, exactly the way we are supposed to be, living the exact lives we're meant to. In embracing this idea, we may, be, we may be able to find a certain level of calm in the storm that life can tend to feel like. Knowing that in everything I do, in everything we do, in every possible mistake, in every triumph, we are all exactly where we are supposed to be. 
It's all just a collection of happy mistakes. There are a number of passages in the Bible that talk about this idea of us humans being made in God's image and God's likeness. And I'm sure this is an idea that could be an unpacked in infinite ways, and there's probably been dissertations written on it. And so obviously I'm going to do it justice in this tiny clip of just a few minutes. Often these passages are either implying the perfection of God or literally saying it, as in the case of Matthew 5, 48, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. One view is that God is perfect and that we are made in his likeness, but we falter due to sin. And we've talked about sin in past services before, and we've talked about how the, the idea doesn't really sit well with us. It's not really a concept we necessarily love at Naked Faith. And extending further on this month's theme, hopefully the natural conclusion is, is making sense by now. That it's not due to sin that we are not perfect. It's due to the fact that this is our very nature as humans, that we are supposed to be imperfect and flawed. Every single one of us makes mistakes. We are flawed people. We have too much pride or not enough confidence. We forget someone's birthday or we don't follow through on a commitment. Uh, we make an inappropriate joke that offends somebody or relate to work. These little missteps are like flavor text, color commentary, the extra spice on the pasta dish that is life. It is part of what makes us human. And so to believe that us being imperfect therefore makes us different and somehow lesser than God is not a view that sits right with me. So maybe we can take a different view. We are made in God's image in her likeness. And we are imperfect beings. And so maybe God is also imperfect in the same flawed yet beautiful way. And maybe we can take a little bit of comfort in that. So maybe we can use that as a grounding point to not be so unbelievably hard on ourselves, which seems to be the default for so many people. Maybe we can ease off the pressure just a little bit, go a little bit easier on ourselves, and learn to start to celebrate our mistakes, embrace our flaws, see failure as an opportunity to learn, rather than as something to avoid, to be ashamed of, to be shamed for. Jesus was a good example of this. Jesus was human, and he made mistakes. He faltered. And that was an opportunity for him to learn. That was an example of him learning how to navigate life just like we're trying to do every single day. Every misstep we make is an opportunity to grow, to learn, to become something different. I often come back to one of my favorite pieces of scripture, the one that my song Don't Lose Heart uh, was written based on. 2 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Maybe being made in God's image doesn't mean we are perfect, but instead that we are given the strength every single day to get back up when we fall, to try again when we make a mistake, the strength to love ourselves because of, not in spite of, our flaws. And so maybe God is imperfect in all the ways that some of the most incredible things in life are imperfect. And maybe we can use that again, as a way to go a little easier on ourselves, stop being so hard on ourselves, and to give ourselves permission to actually learn to start to celebrate the happy mistakes that happen every single day in our lives. Bear with me a little bit. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Candace. My name is Jocelyn. Zoe here. My name is Amy. Heather Campbell here. My name is Nicole. And I've been asked to share with you about a mistake that in the end turned out to be a blessing. The best mistake I ever made. I love this question. You know, at first I was thinking of a mistake that led to something really great, and I have many of those. The reality is, I've made a lot of mistakes in life, just like most people. And I wanted to share... Um, what are the worst moments of my life with you? <laughs> so, bear with me a little bit. So my best mistake that I've chosen to talk about is actually a category of mistakes. Um, I'm sure there was a first time, but since the first time, first time I made this mistake, I now kind of do it on purpose and the mistake would be getting lost. One of my favorite things now to do is to safely get myself lost in an area. 
but that I just go wander around and explore and end up finding something new. I think I do this in my life is to try to use that getting lost concept in terms of exploring new ideas, trying to expand horizons with new relationships with people, or trying new things, that sort of thing. I used to facilitate drum circles all the time, and I had a really amazing opportunity to get to learn from one of the absolute top drum circle facilitators in the entire world. They hosted a public drum circle. I got called on by Cameron. Um, he asked me if I wanted to step into the middle of this drum circle, 100 people, more than three times bigger than anything I'd ever facilitated in my entire life. And then I made a big mistake. I decided to try a really complicated facilitation move that is hard at the best of times, but actually impossible the way that that drum circle was set up with multiple uh, layers of people. I killed it. I killed the circle. It flopped. The mistake would be getting lost. Lucas, my friend, came over and said, do you want to get back in? No, I did not want to. There was no part of me that wanted to get back into that circle. But I did. And I woke up the next day, and I was alive, and I was okay, and I was able to keep drumming, and I was able to keep facilitating. And I understood something about myself that I had never known before. I understood that failure happens, that it can be horrifying, but that there's pretty much always a way to keep going. Just letting yourself get a little bit lost, knowing you can always get back. I need to give you some context first. At 19, I moved out for better or for worse, but what I was most worried about is my sister was four, and I was really worried that at 19, I was gonna move out and we wouldn't be able to have a relationship. I worked through university at an apartment and I did all of their leasing. So I did all their rental agreements. Fast forward, it was finally time to move out of my one bedroom apartment. My friend had found this great place and we were gonna move in with this other girl and her aunt owned the place. And it was, the rent was so cheap. It was just too good to be true. And it was too good to be true. And we did not sign a rental agreement. Two weeks after moving in, this woman's aunt, who we'd, we'd never met, said we needed to get out by the end of the month. She wasn't comfortable with us living there and it was time to leave. And I was just mortified because rent was cheap. No contract, no rentals insurance, nothing. I knew better. I worked in that realm. I knew what a renter's agreement looked like and why that was important. With a heavy heart and a lowered head and a little bit of hurt pride, I decided to move back home. And I lived at home for almost a year. Ended up being one of the best mistakes I ever made. It rebuilt a relationship with my sister. And we had slumber parties and dress up parties and movie nights. And I really decided that moving back home, I would dedicate most of my free time to making sure that my relationship with my sister was positive. And now she's almost 15 and we are thick as thieves and I truly believe it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't signed a rental agreement and I had never moved back home. And the best mistake I ever made was a joint one with my partner and it was our daughter and she was a surprise and I do believe that everything happens for a reason. It just ended up leading me down a completely different life path. It deepened my understanding of love um, and gave me a whole new perspective of life and this life experience and I wouldn't change it for the world. It was a blessing in disguise. When I was told that technology was bad for my kids, everyone told me not to give them technology and I'd be such a bad mom if I gave them technology. So. Being a bad mom, I decided to give them technology. And my son has learned all of his colors and is able to recognize numbers up to 20 because of using technology. Learning that technology is not always bad is probably my best mistake. 
Well, it was a decision that I made to not go back to work full time after my first child. I decided to let my work know that I wasn't coming back full time. But a lot can change in the course of nine months and my husband was laid off work. That was when I regretted uh, telling them so early because it would have been easy for my husband to stay home and me go back full time. But unfortunately, that door had shut and it was no longer an option. There's pretty much always a way to keep going. It doesn't have to be the end. And it turned out that the person that was covering for me was going on leave. So I was able to negotiate to work just mornings and it turned out to be an amazing step that I was able to balance that family life with uh, work and getting the gratification um, out of both. Uh, So that was a mistake that turned into the best uh, job position that I could have had for that time. I've made some mistakes in the relationships I've chosen to enter. Some relationships have been abusive. Others diminished my confidence. However, all gave me opportunity. They allowed me to find the true villain within. They gave me the push to do better and want more with life. As scripture says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. Despite some of these relationships, they have given me a time to build up, to renew, regain, and become the person that I am today. Thanks so much for listening to my story and have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope to see you all soon sometime. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Naked Faith. And now I invite us into a time of prayer. Creator God, you created us to be sensory beings, to be individuals who can feel the warmth of the sunshine, who can be taken back in time by a familiar smell and who can be captured by the experience of running our hands along the surface of an item. God, remind us that we often find beauty in the unexpected and imperfect, and that it is the imperfections that often help us to stop and take notice of the whole. God, help us to see the beauty within our own imperfections and mistakes that we already see in the world around us. Help us to be kind with ourselves and to see ourselves through the eyes of you, the creator. You who lovingly admires all of us, who we are as created in your own image. God, help us to tenderly reach out and embrace those unexpected moments and to lovingly return our gaze to those moments so that we can see its beauty within the whole. Amen. Having humility is the act of acknowledging our mistakes, owning up to our mistakes, recognizing where we've messed up. And I recently read somewhere that practicing humility is actually an act of celebrating our humanity. And I love this idea. To practice humility and own our own mistakes is to celebrate the very nature of what being human is, flawed, imperfect, to embody this idea of happy mistakes. So we hope that you've been able to take something from what we've said at some point in this video, because let's be honest, the majority of people watching this can probably relate at least somewhat to the idea of being way too hard on yourself, striving for these impossible standards of of perfection. And so I hope that you can start to learn and practice how to go easier on yourself, how to give yourself permission to not have to reach those standards because perfection is not something we can achieve. The more we actually strive for it, the more it slips out of our grasp and gets further away. So together, we can help each other learn to celebrate the happy mistakes. We can learn to celebrate our flaws, see failure as an opportunity to learn rather than something to be avoided and shamed. 
Thank you to everybody who made this video possible. Thank you to Josh for being my co-host. Thanks to Brenna for all her work behind the scenes. Thank you to Joanna for helping me film this. Thanks to Leanne for making the community video. Thank you to the band for being wonderful and making incredible music. Uh, thank you to Candice for the prayer. And thanks to all of you for sticking with us. And we're excited to see you on the live stream on Instagram Live if you're watching this as it premieres. Uh, or we'll see you next month in the next video. And now for one final song. We chose this one again partly because it's fantastic and it's a very celebratory song, but also because if you listen to the lyrics, it really does em embody this theme that we've been talking about in this video. One of the lines says, I'm not perfect, they say, but I know that I was born to be loved. And if that doesn't capture what we've tried to say, I don't know what will. So here's the Naked Faith Band performing Salvation by the Strumbellas. That's it.